inside this rather industrial looking case with junk written all over it and indelible inks and gook is a cassette recorder. This is from, I'm going to pronounce it AVID, although that's really just an acronym for audiovisual instructional device there in um, East Providence, Rhode Island. They're still there, or they were founded in 1951. Now, if you look on the internet and you try and Google AVID, you'll come out with a modern AVID that started in the 90s, and they're everywhere. I mean, all the search results are for them. They make some sort of um, software, computer software for audiovisual things and a lot of important stuff. AVID is still in business. They were started in 1951 as to service the airline industry audiovisual needs. And over the years, they got into lots more other things, home, owner, audiovisual and stuff. And they're still in business today, making, as near as I can tell from their website, um, headsets and various 35 millimeter adapters and things like that. So AVID, that's the way I'm going to say it. Now this has a classroom look about it, which makes sense since they were in the educational um, support industry as one of their businesses. And it has a small speaker here. It has a jack for another speaker, headset, line input, and microphone. You have a tone control, volume control, a power light, a recording light, a recording level meter, and on your level meter you can do automatic level control or you can leave that off and control it with your volume. You can monitor things and you can also do the PA thing as a lot of uh, classroom things can do at the time. Uh, when you want to use the PA you can set that to PA. You have a counter and a reset. The counter on this one behaves weird. Um, I'd like to be able to get in here and fix the belt it does fine in fast reverse and fast forward for counting, but not so good in normal counting. But uh, here's the thing. I could not figure out how to get in here. These little attachments are not hex screws. They're not any, they're not Torx. They're not JIA. They're nothing. They're about three millimeters deep. They're totally cylindrical. I don't know how to get in them. Um, they're everywhere. They're on the bottom. Um, I just couldn't figure out how to get in them. None of my tools made a dent. Plus, as I planned on getting in, I tried to pry these knobs off, and they weren't budging. I mean, these things are set on there very well. So I don't know. Maybe you're supposed to be able to get in from the bottom. I don't know. Um, but those are riveted on. There's actually rivets on those, so you can't do it anyway. I don't know how to do that, but... Here we have our cassette well, stop and eject, rewind, record, and play, both with blue dots on them, fast forward, and pause. And we can see inside the cassette well if we take a second. Maybe we can see it running here a little bit. forward. All right, inside the lid is pretty common instructions. I'll uh, let you pause your screen and you can read those at your leisure. Nothing fancy for anyone who's ever used a cassette deck before though. And on the back of the unit Next to a ventilation duct is the manufacturing badge, uh, which shows that it's made in Rhode Island. And it's the 2050. I don't know what that means. I 
would have liked to know, but I don't. Well, let's put a cassette in music from the YouTube library. And I've plugged a couple of vintage Norelco speakers into the speaker jack. And we'll hear what it sounds like with speakers. And then we'll pull that out and we'll listen to it just through its little speaker there. Oops, better get the power on. Mm -hmm. works. Volume works. Let's take this out. Oops. internal speaker. Let's put this back in. It sounds better. Fast forward works. And as soon as fast forward and you'll see that the counter is working in fast forward. But in play, it just doesn't do very well. It moves a real tiny bit and then stops moving. can we check out let's check out um, using the microphone let's see here whoa boy does that ever shoot out doesn't it Put the tape in there we go um, We'll try automatic level control off and we'll use a old Sony microphone. I think this is the F96, I think. I'll stick that in here. Okay, testing the um, Avid 2050 cassette recorder with the Sony F96 microphone. I'm getting somewhat decent meter deflection. Not necessarily great, but I'll adjust the volume here. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, that's a little higher. So uh, this is a, seems to be a pretty nice unit. Now I noticed on the instructions it shows a fuse over here in this little container here but I guess you have to be able to get inside the machine to get to that fuse because you can't see it here and like I say I have not figured out how to get into this well let's hear what this sounds like Okay, testing the um, 
Avid 2050 cassette recorder with the Sony F96 microphone. I'm getting somewhat decent meter deflection. Not necessarily great, but I'll adjust the volume here. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, that's a little higher. So uh, this is a, seems to be a pretty nice unit. Now I noticed on the instructions it shows a fuse over here in this little container here, but I guess you have to be able to get inside the machine to get to that fuse because you can't see it here. And like I say, I have not figured out how to get into this. Well, let's hear what this sounds like. All right, we'll try um, from a line source. I've, I'm using an older Panasonic boombox here. We'll work with that for now. It's got a line out. And we'll make a recording somewhat of our little walkers tape that I always use. Let's see, let's hit the play on the Panasonic. <laughs> Volume down too low. Turn the monitor on, you can do while you're recording. this. We'll rewind it. See the rewind on the counter works fine too. It's just the normal advance doesn't work so well. from the line too once I got the volume set right anyway and uh, just for your information I am getting audio out of both speakers I don't think this is a stereo unit certainly not but uh, I do get audio from both sets of speakers all right let's try the PA function moving this to PA from normal and uh, Powering it on. Got to, got to get back. Uh, can't have the microphone too close to that speaker. But we are only hearing it through the internal speaker up there in the upper left. And I guess under certain circumstances, you can see how this would be quite a PA system. Let me hit the volume here. Okay, uh, gets louder and louder, but of course you run into more of the risk of getting feedback. 
but it certainly does work as a PA, no doubt about it. Okay, let's try some more of that uh, walker's tape, this time with the automatic level control on. see what it sounds like. Keep swinging those arms. They're an important part of your aerobic conditioning. Deflection, let's switch it back off. Well, let's see what we're going to do here. Let's see if that came out. got some stuff there regardless of what the meter showed well okay I think we've worked through most of the features here um, we'll take this out if I can get it out so this is the avid 2050 from an unknown year I would suspect the 1980s maybe um, seems to work pretty well I'm pleased with it except for this belt that controls the counter. Just the speaker now. A tape out. Let's watch that again. Whoa! Be careful when you do that. You hurt yourself. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.